Welcome, friends, to our service today. It's a real joy to see you all. And in our Summer's teachings, we have been given a code of living that, that gives light and emphasis to our own soul qualities or virtues and a conscious path of living that helps one attain and strengthen those qualities within them. So today in our service, we are going to have as our topic, conscious conduct. And it's one of the paths of the path of living. And in that, we're going to intertwine the power of creating positive habits, <laughs> healthy habits. So my hope is that we all can gain and um, from our togetherness and the power we have to nurture our eternal happiness and soul freedom. I'd like to start the service with a prayer. And a prayer is something that's given us an opportunity to reach out further than ourselves, to reach out into the, into the energies that we feel all around us, that we are part of this amazing force of energy, of love. And with that, you're welcome to follow me in this prayer. Almighty Spirit, Mother, Father, Beloved Friend, Our lineage of teachers and saints of all religions. We ask for your blessing and the presence of your consciousness to be here now with us. Almighty Spirit, we are your children, a divine spark the pure self within our souls of your divinity. The individualized reflection of your ever existence, ever consciousness, ever new joy within each and every being. We are divine rays of your image and likeness. Like until, like unto, unto the brilliant rays of our sun above our heads. Help us to fully awaken our consciousness to this realization.
when we contemplate on being alive in these bodies and have in these minds in these senses it's truly an amazing miracle to be here to be conscious for this divinity within us to be riding within these bodies utilizing these minds it truly is a miracle and a gift when we contemplate on it. And it's so much more for those who choose to walk a spiritual practice that helps awaken our inner eye of intuition and to dissolve the delusion in clouds of what we could call our false self or ego that doesn't really know who it is just identifies with the conditioning in our life. But when we practice a spiritual practice that awakens that perception, that intuitive listening, we begin to truly realize who we are and the power we have to be able to create our dreams, to create a heaven on this earth. We have all been blessed with the gift of our senses and free will to experience and enjoy the wonderment of this creation. But if we go into this outer physical world without an inner compass of conscious conduct and mindfulness, the strong sensory pull will truly bring us into some rough and rocky waves in life. Because this gift of life is such a blessing, but we need to have develop or to develop the inner compass, the steady pole star to guide us in life, or we're going to get hurt. We're going to suffer from the sensory desires and habits, attachments. Some may be good for us, but Some may be not in our best of interest or help in this life because they're misguided by our our own egoic desires. And that creates a lot of suffering. For the ego, it's like the shadow of our soul that doesn't really know who it is. And it can take over for most most of our lives and stay in charge of our life and all our desires and cause a lot of suffering. 
And this is why we have a spiritual practice, that we begin to steady that ship and steer it more fully with our, our inner guidance, that pure self, that divine spark of the divinity that we all are. But we have to awaken it. We have to want to awaken it. And as Norm Paulson wrote here, he stated that God is more desirable than all that can be experienced through the five senses in the physical world. However, one does not abandon the outer for the inner. The adept, once knowing the inner, brings it to the outer world for expression through right conduct. That's our work. That's our purpose, to develop it within, get the, get the rudder in the right position and steering your ship and bring it out into the world where you won't be buffered so much with the suffering of attachments and desires because you're coming from the depth of your being, the pure self. And it'll be a whole different experience and how it always was meant to be, to enjoy this gift of these senses, to enjoy this amazing life, to love one another, to help one another. But this is the main ingredient that is necessary. The power of our senses are strong as they create desires, attachments, and habits. Some helpful, some not. And if we only direct them outward without the inner grounding of divine guidance and spiritual practice, this is the root of suffering, of creating what we call samskaras and karma. And as our desires can blind us from not realizing the silent witness within our soul, our divinity, that pure self, and our misguided ego identity becomes the false self filled with desires and the creation of many bad habits that again create suffering. Paramahansa Yogananda stated, your greatest enemies are your bad habits. They will follow you from one incarnation to another until you overcome them. In order to free yourself from them, you must cure yourself of bad habits. How? Good company is one of the best medicines. Each of your habits create a specific groove or pathway in the brain. These patterns make you behave in a certain way often against your own wishes. Your life follows those grooves that you yourself have created in the brain. In that sense, you are not a free person. You are more or less a victim of your habits that you have formed but you can neutralize the dictates of those bad habits. How? By creating new brain patterns, new tracks of opposite to create good habit tracks. Yes, we can do this. We can create these tracks of thinking 
by replacing bad habits with its opposite good habits. And you completely can erase the grooves of bad habits by meditation. There is no other way. However, you can't cultivate good habits without good company and good environment. And you can't free yourself from bad habits without good company and meditation. So we can ask ourselves, how can we create these healthy habits with our conscious conduct and behavior? Well, one of the main things is what we're doing right now is meditation. Having this desire to meditate. And meditation you have to be regular with it. You can't meditate once a week and think it's going to do anything. And the other thing with meditation, especially today in the world of instant gratification, you can just hit a button on your computer and be anything, have everything, <laughs> meals delivered, watch anything on the, the, your TV and stuff. Well, meditation is not really instant gratification, but it's a lasting a lasting depth of peace that surpasses all understanding, a lasting happiness, even in the midst of conflicts and suffering. There's something in us that we find that is changeless, that is present, that is observing, and will not interfere with our free will until we want and go within and find this pearl of great price. And with meditation, to acquire that healthy habit, how many times is a possibility that when it's time for you a little place in life to meditate, either through a group meditation or on your own. And the mind right away starts thinking of all the reasons I can't do it right now. You know, I really should do this first. I, I'll come back to it. I have to meditate later. I'm hungry. I have to do this. I have to pop up. And before you know it, your, your healthy habit of meditation is, is not... Um, happening that day. And to keep it regular, even if it's for only five minutes of a habit, it then becomes as a habit as getting up and brushing your teeth in the morning, or getting up and eating your meal. You don't have to ask yourself if you're going to do it, or if you have the time, or if you want to. You'll do it later. You just know to do it. It's a healthy habit. And the reward of meditation is constant, ever new, ever new awareness, ever new love and joy. It's in us all. So that is a wonderful habit to create. And with meditation, just do it. The minute the time is to meditate, do it without thinking of all the reasons you can't. And in those that have read anything in the Bhagavad Gita or parts of it or understand it, it's an interesting battle going on in the mind, in the senses, and the desires in life, in that ego of our false identity trying to control the show. But through your spiritual practice, through meditation, and as you advance in your meditation and become aware of the spinal centers and chakras that hold from incarnations past to this life, many seeds of our samskaras or karmas of things that are still 
undone that are affecting our life today, we begin to flush and wash those clear, gently and moving them on. And it's important to keep the practice regular so that as these begin to move, you don't get attached to them again. So this is why the practice of meditation is so important as a cultivating a healthy habit. And it's also been said to, to be able to replace a bad habit with a good habit. So that you can, so that the thought patterns can change also and create into a new healthy habit. So any habit that maybe is of no use to you anymore, start filling that area with a healthy habit, something that is going to really help you in life. And it will, as you practice it, it will start changing the tracks of your mind and your thinking to move into that practice. Another um, part of creating a healthy habits is, you know, making a good habit. Let's say you want to take care of yourself. You want to take care of your health. You want to say, you know, I'm going to start. I'm going to start meditating in the morning. I'm going to work out, and um, I'm going to eat a good meal and all this stuff. But you got to make sure that you reward yourself properly. Like saying after you've maybe worked out for a good, good workout, and you feel really good, and you go home and you say, gosh, I was so good in that workout, I think I'll eat that ice cream in the refrigerator right now. <laughs> Which is okay if you do it uh, t- temperately. But if it becomes a habit, you're creating a bad habit on top of what you wanted to be a good habit. So, again, to give yourself a good reward, a reward of saying, yes, I can, I did this, you know, or do something that makes you feel good, that is a positive thing. And to be conscious of how we use our free time. And free time is a wonderful gift to get and to have. And we all should have free time our free creative time, our free creative time for creating and hobbies and things. And it's also a time we can enjoy the pleasures of our senses. A time you can watch movies and, uh, you know, go out to eat and have all these wonderful things. But if these things that you're doing are becoming out of balance and you're finding that it's almost like an addiction of what we're doing, it will begin to become a bad habit. So free time is great. Use your conscious, mindful conduct in enjoying this amazing and rewarding life. And Another wonderful way of creating your healthy habits is just being mindful of being present, present with your breath, present in this very moment now. Because when we're here consciously with this moment now, that is always a new now, is where we can connect with that divine inner compass that pole star of our life, that divinity of who we are. We are this divine spark of divinity right within us, but it will not interfere until you work it and want it to come forth in your life. So a good way, a simple way, is just becoming aware of your breath. Because the divinity within you is not in the past or the future, but in this very present moment of now. 
And as Paramahansa Yogananda stated, another way to continue with these habits is through good company and environment, supportive community, healthy environment. Go places that you know are going to uplift your happiness, your creativity. And another wonderful gift that we all have is the practice of gratitude. Gratitude, thankfulness, kindness. Just like prayer, gratitude is being aware of a presence outside of us that we are bowing to in gratitude and thankfulness. That pause before we eat our meals in gratitude. That pause before we speak or react. That gratitude. Gratitude is very powerful and it's a very powerful energy that will help build the tracks in our consciousness, in our brain, to only be of positive, healthy living and habits. So, and Paramahansa Yogananda stated, affirmations are alive and are also very powerful in helping to change the course of how one thinks. So affirm with conviction before going to bed or arising in the morning. I can change. I have the will to change. I will change. Hold to that thought throughout the day and carry it with you into the subconscious realms of sleep and the superconscious realm of meditation. And one last quote that I would like to just say from my friend Valerie King. The spiritual path is a purification of our habits. Little by little, we chip away like a sculptor, chipping away at a great stone and reveals a beautiful piece of art. So we're going to go now into our quiet time of meditation, this wonderful gift that we have to share with one another, this wonderful gift of meditation where we can use our breath, our inhale breath and our exhale breath to calm our body and it will calm our mind and the restlessness of thoughts. And as we place our awareness and gaze right here at that point of our spiritual intuitive awareness, the seat within us of our own pure self within our soul, we are awakening that presence, that part of us that is our own true nature. So let's be here now and if we want in our meditations to affirm our own affirmations and bring to the bring to the forefront possible habits you want to rid of and habits you want to cultivate through your meditation, let that be an intent and give it to spirit, give it out of gratitude into the space around you. And then come back to your seat of peace and stillness as we be here now and we will be moved into meditation 
with the sound of the bowls.
with practice. You can be in your meditations and really have a deep meditation in time. Where you connect and focus on a power, a presence that just draws you to it, that is right within us. And all the thoughts of restlessness go by the wayside. And this is available for all of us, for we are all of this divinity right within us. And to really keep a habit of meditating regularly, even with the thoughts of distraction, telling us all the reasons it's, it can't meditate right now. Just do it and practice even if it's only for five minutes, to be still and know right within our own being and to use this power anchored, anchored in divine guidance and will to move it forward and to create our own destiny. As in the Upanishads, you are what your deep driving desire is. As you desire, so is your deed. As your deed is, so is your destiny. And as Abe Lincoln stated, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So with the para within our beings, anchored in our divine, intuitive will, let us go forward and plant seeds of good thoughts to grow healthy habits in the field of power with conscious conduct and enter and enjoy the harvest of your soul's ever new joy and freedom. And as Paramahansa Yogananda stated, temptations can be strong, but you are stronger because the image of God is within you. So let us go forward and bless each other and bless this day and bless this amazing amazing creation within and all around us. Namaste. Amen.
Guide me to the right. 